the afternoon, evening, early Sunday morning again. Um, I think I really recently said early Sunday night, which was wrong to somebody. Um, we are talking, thinking, exploring, square dancing, picking a topic, talking about it, and um, and what? Oh, and talk. Yeah, <laughs> having one person talk about it and others. This week, um, our topic is hashtag squares which is a new kind of hash calling, which we call patter now, or is a new kind of tag the line, or or is it number squares or pound squares? I, I don't know. That's why I'm here to find out. But the gentleman who came up with this novel, interesting way to entertain dancers that need a little extra entertainment and, uh, and doesn't want to introduce Disposable experimentals at the time, um, a gentleman all the way from Massachusetts, which for some of you is all the way, and for me is a hop, skip, and a four-hour jump, I guess. I can't believe it's that far, Clark. Um, gentleman who has been a member of Carl Lab, Board of Governors, Executive Committee, mostly, to me, known, not really mostly, for hours and hours and decades of work on the definitions committee um and currently breathing freely because he doesn't have to <laughs> <laughs> um and, and mostly a, a friend since since before he was a caller um i would like to introduce from massachusetts clark baker clark why don't you take it away and fill in the blanks that i forgot to say sounds good <clears throat> um before we get started on my talk, I had chatted with Don um, earlier this week, and my company had hired a professor from Stanford who studies Zoom fatigue. And we'd had a talk a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago in this session on, are you Zoomed out? Have you been going to too much Zoom stuff? And his talk was excellent. It should be a TED talk. I don't know if it is. I put a link in the chat to an article out of Stanford that covers four reasons why people experience Zoom fatigue. And they all made sense. They were all fascinating. I wouldn't necessarily have thought of them. And some of them have solutions. So when you have a chance, you might want to read that link. Second, um, I want to get one other thing in the link here. And I can do that by going to here and copying this and back over to you guys. Um, this is a link to my webpage where pretty much everything I've written, um, including this talk, is on that page. So there's lots of interesting stuff there. And then we'll get started. And I'm going to share my screen and we're going to riskily share the desktop share and i don't care about you guys so we'll hide that ah does this look pretty good yep yeah awesome um now this talk is on hashtag um, and I showed you that in the chat. So what we're doing today is we're going to learn about hashtag squares and how to teach them, at least how I teach them, and maybe a little bit about why they're fun. Um, the best way to do this is not over a Zoom session, but I would typically gather 16 of you and say, hey, let me show you something new or interesting in the hallway, say at a caller lab meeting or at a national convention in the back of the hall or out in the hallway. And I would walk you through some of this stuff and you would experience it kinesthetically as it's happening. And you could see how I'm teaching it and decide to teach it in a similar way to what I do. Um, but just like that hexagon talk, we can't do that 
and we're going to do the second best thing in these taminations. So I wanted to set this in some context because other talks I seem to forget that and usually about now Don interrupts and asks me a couple of really pertinent questions. Um, and then someone else says they can't see what I'm presenting or they can't hear me. Um, so right off the bat, can everyone hear me okay and read what I'm presenting? Yeah. Awesome. And then back to context, um, hashtag squares are gonna be something that's kind of like um, in the same boat as um, say hexagon squares or progressive squares or any sort of twist or change on square dancing that the dancers can use their knowledge of all the calls, but they have to learn this one more thing that applies to everything. And a little bit of it might be fun for a bunch of people. Some go really gung ho and want a lot of it and others could take it or leave it. So think of this as like hexagon squares or six couple squares, um, but, um, but different. And finally, I need to pick a Helen. Um, I need to pick a person who I'm talking to, who I'm gonna ask questions of, like, do you see what I'm talking about? Does this make sense? Do you understand? I'm looking for someone who's never seen or done hashtag squares, but is willing to work with me throughout the talk. Any volunteers? Clark, John, Joan. You want me to use you, John? I'm happy to. I will. Uh, John, John will be a willing subject. Okay, thank you, John. You'll be the Helen for this talk. Hey, do I have to take notes? Nope. Okay, and we're going to so follow the hashtag handout on my web page. So let, let me jump over there. And that is here. So um, we, um, I guess I invented these and I don't quite know when, um, but because Don wanted this talk, I finally wrote them up. So here's the write-up. Um, and um, I looked at some old email and noticed that in 2015, I wrote this little bit in email to the SD callers list. And I had done it at a caller lab and a national convention a couple of years earlier. And one of the things I did at the National Square Dance Convention is I was scheduled for a 30 minute hexagon spot. And to me, hexagons were old news and hashtags were new news. And I asked the room full of dancers who were all squared up in hexagons, like, are you willing to let me do something different with you that isn't hexagons, even though you came here for hexagons, I think you'll enjoy it. And they were willing to let me change the subject, which was risky. And I had them all square up in squares with squares of boys and squares of girls. And then I did something I'll talk about in just a second. And I ended up with seven or eight hashtags in the room. And I'd never called for more than one hashtag in my life. So this was new and a little bit scary to me. And the whole session went pretty well. And I think they enjoyed it. So let's talk about that. Um, so here's how we get started. Um, you're going to get two squares of dancers, and I suggest one of all girls and one of all boys. And it doesn't matter what role they dance, they're just going to have to do the part they've got. And hopefully, we aren't going to be doing any gendered calls, so there's no star throughs or, or um, swing your partners or whatever. And you have them square up, one square of girls, one square of boys next to each other. And you have the um, girls square, well, have the boys square, have the heads past the ocean, and the girls square have the sides past the ocean. Sound good? Mm -hmm. And then have both squares extend the tag. So now we have ocean waves, 
One of the squares has the ocean waves going north-south. One of the squares has the ocean waves going east-west. And then have the dancers move their squares together so the flagpole centers are right on top of each other. And this is going to look like this. So let's say, you know, the, all the reds are maybe boys, I don't know, and all the blues are girls. And they, they're all lined up and they have little stars in each corner. Um, by the way, let me pause for one second and say, I asked Brad Christie, I said, I need to give this talk. And I really wish that Taminations did hashtag squares. I don't think it's gonna be very hard for you to program, but here's what it is. So I explained it to him and with a quote, small amount of programming, I got the hashtag button. Um, so I'll be using Taminations it won't do the sequencer, but it will do them call by call. And that's all we're gonna need for this talk. So John, are you happy with this? We got the two squares, the girls all look one way and the boys look another way. And every corner of the square has a little star. Are boys on the left or boys on the right? Say again. Where are the boys and the girls squares, left or right? Uh, well, I don't care initially, but once they move them on top of each other, they look like the picture on my screen. So uh, at the, mo at I the moment, that's blue boys is, are blue or girls are red. They could be red. side by side. They could be front and back in the room, wherever you have space. But once you have them do the past the ocean, extend the tag, and then move the squares up, the two squares, Yeah, I think we may have lost Clark, but I wanted to. I think the, the point that that the, the question is that the blue pe the blue people are are from one square and the red people are from the other square. Right, blue. So the blue, if we started with a boy square and a and a girl square, the blue or the let's call the blue the boys, or whichever one you want. That's you no know, blue boys blue sounds boys. good. Yep. Sorry, Clark, I, I was writing and I guess I did not see how you stack the squares. Can you back up and yep. show? Let me go right over to where I had my thing. Hold on. Uh, I need to go right over to here. So I called boys squares have the heads past the ocean. Girl squares have the sides past the ocean. Both squares extend the tag. And then I told them, now move your squares so the flagpole centers line up. In other words, the two squares are on top of each other. And in each quadrant of the square, you'll have a right-hand star with two boys and two girls. Tell me when you're happy with that. Okay, go ahead. Yep, so it kind of looks like this. And then it's gonna be a mob scene for the dancers. And I tell them, and that's the reason I separate them by gender is I want them to be able to look and know who their friends are, who's in their square. All the boys are in a square and they're in right-hand ocean waves. So boys, look at your right-hand ocean waves. Do you see all the boys? Do you see what you have? And hopefully they'll go, yeah. And then you say, girls, look at your, all the girls, look at your own ocean wave, look at the other ocean wave of girls. Do you see who you have? And hopefully they see who they have. Sound good? Yeah, they've automatically made diamonds then, right? Yeah, or stars, right. Okay, all right. Um, Clark, Clark, I got a question. Helen's got a question, Clark. Go for it. So if you have a static squares and you have the heads do a pass the ocean, how do you get the sides into a past the ocean into a wave? So what, let me go back. What I do, is, this is important, we wanna get this right, is I have two squares, one of boys and one of girls, right? Yeah, so you have the boys head, heads past the ocean. Say together. boy square have the heads past the ocean, girl square have the sides past the ocean. What do you do about, so the boy square, what do you do about the sides? What, where, are the, where are the sides doing? In the, well, in the, the boy square? squares had the heads past the ocean. The sides stood still. The boy squares in a quarter tag. Right. So how do you, and the girls, you got the girls in the quarter tag going the other way, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And Yeah, John, there's two, two separate squares. In one square, the head boys pass the ocean because it's all boys. The other square, the side girls, past the ocean 
So they go at two different and angles. then and then he moves the squares together to overlap. In oh, actually, okay. actually, before okay. that, there's an before that there's an extend. That's oh, what that's what puts him in the way. And then then he moves them to overlap. Says everybody other. extend. I, I oh, think, okay. Yeah, I think the extend would help. I think that's what you missed, Kurt. Was or that Kurt got it that you guys missed that he did an extend and had parallel waves. The other thing, Clark, that is a little confusing is that when you go to Taminations, it's not heads and sides. Heads, it's not girls being one color and boys being another color. It's one square being one color and the other square being the other color. But let's say that again, Don. All okay. the boys are in one square, correct? Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. If All they the are, then, are then I've All the boys something. are blue. Okay. okay, so let me back up for Don. Well, let me let me see the Taminations picture. I see parallel waves overlap. Yes. yes. But the blue ones are not all boys and the red ones are not all girls. Yeah, you oh. just have to visualize that. It's I, boy I, by oh, gender, I understand. Not by I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know what the confusion is. I we didn't have Taminations change the way it drew the shapes of the dancers. Right. And and so, I, yeah, I, I right. ignore the 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 rounds and squares. I My think, bad never thought of it. I think some people were concerned about that. That's yes. why I was trying to No, nope. great. Exactly right point. And okay. And on some of the, the places, I don't see it here, but Brad allows you to get rid of shapes and, and just have gender gender free people up there but this doesn't have it this doesn't have it right no okay Brad, brad's here somewhere yeah yeah, he, yeah i'm here yeah you can only get rid of shapes of the sequencer and since we don't have hashtags in the sequencer yet that's why we, you, you can't get rid of the shapes for this presentation okay i'm up to snuff to where we are right now okay i'm good with it good is there anyone no, I, who is not happy with what we've done so far and we're up to here where we've asked the boys to look at their waves and the girls look at their waves and here we are clark you should call it the reds look at their waves and the blues look at their waves oh okay um so then i tell the dancers we're about to do a swing through everyone's going to move at the same speed are you ready Swing through. Everyone star half by the right and the centers trade by the left. I will show you that in Taminations. That's cool. Is that move too fast or should I, I can go this no, way. No, also. that's fine. Here's the other choice. So I'm going to put it back to normal until someone tells me we want to see it slower. Are you okay with this, John? Yeah, looks good so far. Yeah. The okay. other John. <laughs> Helen, the, Helen, John. The Helen, John. Yeah. John Jones. Yeah. You okay with this? Yeah, I'm okay with it so far. Not you, John. John Jones. The Dever John. The Helen John. <laughs> Go. Say again? Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Okay. So when I walk them, I have them do several of these swing throughs. So everyone gets both parts and everyone gets a feel of moving together with dancers who you aren't used to having in your way, et cetera. Um, and then I move on to um and and this repeating it several times is going to uh there's a typo this repeating it several times is going to be important um for almost all the calls you do you might be bored as a caller but they aren't going to be bored as dancers because this has a different feel and they're going to be um intrigued by it and not used to it now if the dancers know advanced, I usually do a quarter through and a three quarter through, um, but that's not super important. But the next call I want to move up to is circulate. 
and circulate's a big deal. Um, <laughs> and the first thing I need to do is find circulate. So where's circulate? Basic two? Yeah. I think it's basic one. We'll go for basic one. Yes, good going. And we need circulate from right-hand waves. And we're going to first start with ends circulate. So I tell them I'm going to do an end circulate. Do the ends see where you are? If you're facing in, you're just going straight ahead to your next dancer's spot. If you're facing out, you're going to walk in a big arc. Don't get confused. You're going to go to the far end. Are you ready? Ready, ends circulate. We're going to run that again. You'll notice that the dancers in red and blue kind of almost get in each other's way just a little bit um, as, they, as they leave their spot and go into their spot. But the dancers will work out a traffic pattern. So I do several ends circulate, so maybe four of them. So all the ends have had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sound good, so John? I got, yeah, I got a question, though. Do you tell dancers up front that they don't switch gender, so they, they have to circulate to the next same gender position? I think that's good to say. Because otherwise, you know, I might have just went around the corner and be done with it. But you, Correct. So you, yeah, you could have this red one just go over here and say, I did it. No, you have to, you have to stay with your own tribe, right? So you want, yeah, so you want to, you want to make sure that you you swap with your own gender, which would, which would tell you you'd have to walk all the way around. Right. Okay. And then Rock. once I've seen that, I guess you have two alternatives. You can either do a swing through and have everyone else exposed to end circulate, or you can work on center circulate. Let's go to center circulate. So for Rock. the centers, I think it's a little tighter in the middle. I make sure that the ones looking in are going to go straight ahead without walking through anybody and go to the their their same person, you know, who's looking out is right in front of them. And for the people looking out, it's just a quick flip over, just like they were doing the the trade part of the second part of swing through. And then I have them do a center circulate and it looks like that. And you notice that even in Taminations, no one walked on top of anybody. It's kind of like a big split circulate, sort of. Yes. So are people a happy with that? short command. Go for it. A short command from, from Germany. Um, I did it uh, sometimes when I do circulates. Um, I ask the boys only do their, their part circulate and then the girls only circulate so that they're not so... Boost. Yes, and in this case, since we have all the red people in theory are boy, or all the blue people are boys and all the reds are girls, we would need to use centers and ends for that. But it's correct. Instead of going for the whole shooting match of circulate, you really want to have them get ends circulate down and then get centers circulate down. And then we're going to go for the all eight circulate. But Clark, I think his comment was that you could go break it down for the first couple of times. You could break it down even a step further and have only one square do it at oh, a time. That's an interesting idea. I've never done that. If you think that's worth it and and it helps, I would use that. That's a good teaching idea. I like that, that because that then only be, half the dancers are moving. That would be center mean? center red circulate, then center blue circulate. Is that right? Oh, can you do just boys circulate and then girls circulate? That, yeah, if the boys work? are all in a square, you could, well, I wouldn't do, okay, I mean, this is kind of a, how do you teach and build up from something small and successful? Remember, um, from one of Don Beck's teaching things, the very first time you show or teach something, you want them to be successful at it. So you need to set them up for success, and you need to use words that will make them successful, because if they make a mistake right off the bat, they're likely to repeat that mistake when the going gets tough a little later. Yeah. So as, as if I, you said boy square only have the ends circulate and you'd talk them through who they are and what they're doing. Now, remember they know circulate and they've danced a million of them, 
So we aren't teaching circulate from scratch. We're just teaching search, circulate in this unusual setting. Yeah. Clark, if I understood what Klaus was saying, and Klaus, correct me if I'm wrong, if you had this set up uh, as you progress through, what, what Klaus, as I understood it, is saying, keep the squares will have their own identity. So in this case, if it was boy, girl, boy, girl, instead of all boys and all girls, you'd say red square circulate. They identify themselves as a square. Then you'd have blue square circulate. Then you could do all eight or all 16 circulate or everybody circulate. It, it just keeps the identity of the squares the same way that you're doing boys and girls, just so that they know the square. It's just that next progression. Right. And all, all, and as I understand it, the way you've got this set up, all of your circulates will then, well, now will all work, whether it's a split circulate, a girl circulate, a boy circulate, ends or centers, if you're doing the entire hashtag at the same time, they'll all work in the same principle. Is that correct, Klaus? Exact. Um, that the problem with an all eight circulate is that the uh, out facing ends must be much quicker than the in facing um, end of the other gender. So it's easier to learn um, if only the, the boys or the blues, all the blues circulate, all the reds circulate. And if they did that good, then everybody in your own setup circulates. It's much easier to learn. Okay. Clark, Clark, I'm wondering, um, before you overlap the squares, are the squares always going to remain independent and only work with themselves? Yes. So before you overlap the squares, you can have everybody get acquainted with everybody in their square. And if it's all women or all men, it might be easier. And then say, we're going to get these... We don't have enough floor space, so we're going to bring these other people in also. And but they'll be out of your way. Just remember to only work with people in your square. Is that you could do that? And I need to strongly emphasize right now that I've almost always done this with boy square and girl square because we as humans can generally look and see who the boys are and who the girls are through a variety of visual cues. And we've done it our whole lives. And whenever the dancers have said, we don't need that boys, girls things, we wanna do it, this is the square I wanna do it with, or I wanna do that, or I don't wanna have the other part or whatever. And they've just said, don't worry, I know who's in my square, or don't worry, we're all wearing dark clothing, or we all have blue jeans, or we all have glasses, and we can tell the square apart. Invariably, when I do that, it, it doesn't go well. And what they told me was completely false and they get confused and they can't do it. So no matter how strongly your group says, don't worry, we can do it. I wouldn't trust them one bit. I would always do for starters, a boy square and a girl square. A, a reminder to John Jurgens, what Clark said at the beginning was all calls that he uses are gender free. So it doesn't matter you can't say boys do this and girls do that kind of thing. It's they're all gender free calls. So yeah, but when, no he has, when he has the two squares together, though, there are boys and girls mixed together. So if we said, if you said like Klaus said, do all the boys circulate, then all the girls circulate, that would uh, that would make as much sense as doing the ends and centers. So it's just but another way of looking call, at it. I'm not going to call to the boy square or the girl square. Every call I give, I'm not going to say all 16 circulate. I'm just calling square dancing like we usually do. The call is all eight circulate. There are no boys and girls. All right. There's centers right. and ends. Let's mush ahead. We've beat this to death. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm about to do an all eight circulate. All right. And it's a good feeling as it dissolves and then gels again. And at this point, you can use swing throughs, all eight circulates, more swing throughs until they get good at those patterns. At that point, let's go back over to the talk. Um, you could introduce split circulate. I'll show you a split circulate. 
I'm hoping split circulate is here. Yep, up to. Thank you. Nope, yes. And we need it from say right hand waves. Oh. Yeah, just scroll down further. Yeah, I got it, thank you. Here we go. Again, no one walks into each other. The traffic pattern works and you could put this in wherever you wanted. You could also put scoot back in at this point in time, but whatever you're gonna do, we're gonna stay in ocean waves. And then at this point, I usually show them spin chain through. You can obviously do your own progression, but you're gonna be learning it, what works well and what doesn't. Um, so let's go for spin chain through. I'm expecting that's gonna be a mainstream call. This one's very pretty. All of these are very kaleidoscopic. Um, and I want right hand waves and we'll just go for it. Often I don't have to teach this at all. I just have them do it because between the circulates, the split circulates, the swing throughs, they've begun to get the idea. And here we go for spin chain through half, three quarters, star through the middle, and then finish with your own gender three quarters. This one is easier than the circulate and all yes. eight circulate. You're hanging on to someone most of the time. I Here we go again. Replay, the Ducey being a nightmare. <laughs> Let's talk for a minute about the handholds in these stars. Um, for a Thar star in the center, we usually use a pack saddle. I don't recommend that for these stars. For other stars, often in the middle of the square, we do a palms up, maybe your thumb gently on the, on the back of the dancer in front of you in the star. I don't recommend those for these stars either. There's a third type of star, a so-called hands across star, where the boy is holding onto the boy and the girl's holding onto the girl but the boys aren't touching girls or the reds are holding on to reds and the green and the blues are holding on to blues, but not each other. That those hands across stars um, help you know who your friends and who your enemies are. You could call this friends and enemies dancing if you wanted, um, where your square are all your friends and the other square are all your enemies because you never, you never end up on an enemy spot. Um, so, um, uh, I recommend the hands across stars, but anyhow. Okay, enough with um, ocean waves for the moment. And at this point, I normally transition to two face lines. And two face lines don't have the same flexibility as ocean waves. They have a bunch of variety and unexpected wows. Um, and remind me at the end of this talk to have other people who have done hashtags mention stuff they've discovered and ideas they have that I didn't mention at all. So at this point, I would normally have the centers run to get to two face lines. And um, you'll notice that those don't work very well. Um, give me a clue where run is. Is it gonna be on basic two? Ha, good guess, Clark. Um, and we need um, none of these. Centers run from right hand waves. You'll notice this is an awkward call that doesn't work well. So you do it, you might mention that, figure out a traffic pattern. I just do it once because my goal is to get to the two face lines, not to have them workshop centers run. So now we have two face lines. We wanna do couples circulate. We're gonna have a problem because here, just like I had the hands across stars, here we're definitely doing a couple's handhold with maybe the boy couple having their handhold because they're taller on average above the girl couple. And as soon as this lead boy couple starts to circulate, they're walking through this end girl couple 
who's heading straight ahead. And what they typically will do is raise their join hand to arch over that lady. And then they start going around the corner and they think everything's good, but as they mesh into the final ending position, they have to walk over that same lady a second time. So there's kind of an arch over to get started and an arch, oops, and an arch over to get in. Ah, I'm doing the wrong thing, excuse me. Let's go to couple circulate. Am I guessing that's basic two? Basic one, I believe. And is it going to be under circulate or do we have that's our That's correct, own? yeah, under circulate. Thank you. Here we go. Ready? Couple circulate. You see how, pick a lead blue couple and watch how they have to arch over and arch over. So you kind of whack them on the way over and you whack them on the, at the end, but then it settles into this nice thing. Are we happy with that? Yeah, it looks like one person piggybacked on the other one for a little ride. Yeah, yeah, so they don't looks, really looks notice good. each other as they're moving through the call, but they do definitely know about each other on the beginning and end. Um, um, Taminations is not altering any of its paths from normal squares. And here you'll have a slightly bigger square and people can take like the blue couple, blue lead couple, the lead couples can take a bigger path as they do what they're doing so as to not walk on top of other people. Yeah. I only saw this once, Clark, and what, what when uh, I saw a couple circulate, what happened, and it wasn't in all boys, all girls, it was as couples, but the, the lead couple arched, and then they became the trailing couple for the circulate, and then they just arched back over to fix. It was actually quite, really quite clever and quite nice to look at once they got the grasp of it. Correct. Yeah, I think they're going to arch twice, once as they leave their position and once as they settle into their ending yeah, position. And as they moved around in that bigger loop, they were kind of like trailers to the, like right now, the initial trailers or the ones facing in, uh, the leaders would make the arch and go forward. As they moved forward, they started to circuit, the uh, original leaders started to circulate in behind them and then just sort of pivoted in on the arch and it really looked effective. Are, are you saying alternating arches basically? No, no le the leaders, the leaders in this setup or the ones that are facing out would yeah. arch and go forward and the other ones just sort of did a check step to let them do that and as they, they circulated the original leaders the ones that are facing out initially they just sort of circulated in behind them in the loop and then arched back over again and it was just a, an arch follow and arch back in and then the leaders become trailers the trailers become leaders for the next yeah, it minutes. really looked good. It, it it took a couple seconds for them to grasp that, but it really did look good when they did it. And after that, it was like the arch was part of the movement. You can see halfway through a couple circulate, this blue couple would actually, the outside couples would actually be dancing a little bit wider and it yeah. would look like this giant pinwheel here. And then as they come in, the blue, this blue couple I'm watching here is arching to not collide with them and then boom, they're connected. Okay. Yep. Now, when, when I saw the blue couple at that halfway point were actually standing, the girl would be behind the boy or the- or Oh, the they'd boys. be follow yeah. one following yeah. the other rather than- But I, I can see what you mean with the yeah. extended pinwheel yep. as well. Both of those would work. So the neat call to do next, once they've done a, a few couple circulates is, um, the next call is bend the line. And let's just use our imagination here. Well, let's set up the real bend the line. Okay, what's that gonna be? Basic two? No. One. One? Hey, look at that. Right, because the line's back to back. And we need, uh-oh, uh here we go. We right, want this yes. one. So, um, what do we think? If we've seen that couple circulate has a little bit of clunkiness to it, what might bend the line have? A little bit more. You'd think more clunkiness. Watch this. No clunkiness. 
Oh, that's going to be a shock to the dancers. I'm going to do it again. I don't even give them any instructions or anything. I just do a couple of couples circulate. I just call bend the line. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> it worked. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, the now you're through. stuck. What do we do Good next? Path, path through. Um, actually, I want to get them back into waves as, clean as, as quick as I can. We could past do pass ocean. through. Yeah, like past the ocean. If we did a pass through, that would work and everyone would be happy and we'd have lines looking out. And then we're stuck with what to call. And lines facing out, let's do that one. Let's say we're here and I call Ben the line. This is a disaster. Everybody's going against each other, yeah. Exactly. You're going against against the grain. So so I never call Ben the line from lines facing out because it's such a right it's a mess so instead um i i usually call past the ocean but before i call it i remind them you're going to pat we're going to do it by its kind of parts we're going to pass through face our partner and step to a wave and have them do it kind of clunky like that initially and let's uh fire up a past the ocean here that's got to be basic too ha I could call this stuff from lines. Yes. So here's past the ocean. They're passing, they're facing, and there they go. And um, contamination smooths out that action a little bit. So, um, so you could dance it clunkier. And, and if anyone gets lost, we're never going to resolve the square. I don't care who their partner is, who their corner is whether they were dancing a boy's part or a girl's part. All I say when some dancer gets lost in this is if everyone else makes the formation, they can kind of find the hole where someone's missing and fill in. And as long as you still have waves of boys and waves of girls, you're golden again. And I don't sweat the mistakes at all. I just pick you, people right up again and go. Can you do that again, Clark? The past the ocean? Yeah, sure. Yeah, slow it down too, please. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to drag it myself. So they start their pass through. You'll notice that they're going to have to do some traffic pattern in the middle by themselves. And then they start turning to step to the wave. There's that turning to step to the wave. And it's really cool when it's a mess and then it gels. And even if only three quarters of the people kind of get there in any little star, the lost person will pretty quickly find their position. Okay. Mark? Yes. Uh, uh, could you do from out facing lines uh, half tag to accomplish the way? I will do it. Um, that's you're, you're thinking ahead. Like if I get stuck in a weird place, how can I get out of it? So yeah. where is half tag the line going to be? Mainstream. Ha. Okay. And we want lines facing out. I'm going to drag it slow. So let's see what happens. They're all going to face the center. And some of them took a little step forward and they start walking. And boom, it's a really quick call, isn't it? Yeah. Half tag. That, but it doesn't look too bad, right? It doesn't look like, other than people getting lost, I don't think anyone's gonna walk on top of each other. Mm -hmm. I like your idea. So maybe from that bend the line, you could do a pass through and a half tag. That might be even easier to accomplish with the dancers than pass the ocean. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, Clark, um, you had, to set up the, the two face lines, you did the boys run and you said that was very awkward and we'll try not to use that. Do you do, do I did you, a center's run? Oh yeah, sorry, center's run. Um and did did you uh do you feel you want to show them that there are awkward things specifically, or could you okay. just use something like centers you turn back instead to get to get them? Uh I don't think I have an opinion on that. I don't mind the slight awkwardness of a center's run. Um, and I know a few other things I do are going to have some awkward stuff, but, but um, 
but yeah, you could just have the centers you turn back. I agree, but I don't mind the centers run. Okay. Yeah. And also if you think that, that certain calls won't be successful for your dancers because they aren't good at them or they aren't all positioned with them, then obviously doing an easier one, like a centers you turn back might, might also like that could be good because this is since I put all the boys in one square and all the girls in the other, this is going to be quote all position dancing for everybody. Right. Um, yep. Okay. So where do we go next? We've done waves. We've done two face lines. We've done simple calls. How do can we do wheel and, Can you do a wheel and deal? No, I'll tell you, I don't want to do that yet. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. Um, I want to stay in waves and two face lines. I don't want to be in columns, eight chain, trade by, or any of that initially. So in the, in the little progression in the write up I have here, we do two face lines. We did the couple circulate. At this point, we get the facing lines, do a forward and back. And then I did pass the ocean, um, et cetera. And then, I mean, you're going to be doing this with some talking and walking, but whenever you can put the music on and dance them through the calls that they can do in a row. If they've learned swing throughs, circulate, scoot back, split circulates, and, and like dance some of that with music and then, and then move on to the run and then some couples circulates and the bend the line, play the music again, and then do, you know, run them through that. Now I go to ocean waves. This I think is kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, with spin chain through as the building block, the next thing I do is I say, hey, let's do a spin chain the gears. And everyone groans because they think that's gonna be impossible. I have yet to let that it come. That must be a plus call, right? It is. Yes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work through spin chain the gears, spin chain and exchange the gears and relay the Ducey because um, all of those are not impossible. And in fact, a lot of fun and they have some things you need to show and tell them some teaching points, but they are achievable, I think by, you know, plus dancers. So let's look at spin chain the gears and let me talk through what I do. So everyone who's been dancing this We're clerkless. Frozen again, Clark. Did we lose we're Clark? Clark? We're clerkless. Come back, Clark. Clark, I don't know if you can hear us, but you were muted. I we, think no, we've I lost him. Muted. My thing said that something's using an amazing amount of memory and maybe you should quit it. So. <laughs> Here I'm back. Let me do my screen share again. This is the second time that's happened, but we'll live with it. Desktop. Hashtags share. uses too much memory. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, this is this has a lot of um, mental overload for the dancers, and they all gave up the ghost. So mm -hmm. here we are with Safari. Okay, so we're happy again. We're about to do spin chain the gears. So. I talk them through, we go turn half, centers three quarters, and we're gonna talk about this. And I tell them to have the centers trade, but it's the others who turn around. They have to turn around and slide in or flip in to form these stars. And I stop them here and make sure they all see these stars. Okay. These stars are forehand stars they are with all their friends and they aren't in the normal place that they've been dancing to this mm -hmm. point today. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. Then the stars turn three quarters. And at this point, the people who meet in the center, it's a four dancer star through the center and the others have to flip out and don't let somebody get in their way as they flip out to become the end of a wave and then those who meet three quarters, they usually find each other just fine. And there they are. So they won't dance it exactly like Taminations because we had a few people on top of each other, but there'll be some adjusting and breathing 
to cause it. So let's run that whole thing through. They turn, they go three quarters, they form their stars, they turn them, the gear stars, they trade, and then we have ocean waves. And obviously you're gonna to wanna to run through that a few times. Um, you're gonna to wanna to do a swing through and give people the other parts, et cetera, et cetera. It will be successful. They will have a big sense of accomplishment and it's really cool and geometric for the people who like the, the Berkeley Busby type action. Okay. I'm gonna move on to spin chain and exchange the gears. Oh my gosh. Let's slide the thing through. They should be good. They're gonna get up to the point where their star turns three spots. And however you teach it, there's a follow your leader. There's a mama duck, whoever is the leader, however they know who they are and identify it. They have to take a really wide loop and not walk through anybody and taminations won't do that wide loop. And then as they unroll into that ocean wave, for some reason, that just seems to magically work, even in hexagon. So here they go following. See, these guys are heading straight through the middle. That's bad. You really need to walk more way around the outside. Mm -hmm. And then it gels into ocean waves. So take my word for it. They can do it. It's worth it. They may struggle. Then you get, but when they get it, they have that sense of accomplishment. They're all going to want different parts, et cetera, et cetera. Sound good? Moving on. Relay the Ducey. Now, sometimes in teaching hashtag or hexagons, you end up with hints that actually improve your teaching of normal square dancing. Um, one thing I know in Relay the Ducey is that you and your buddy, well, we know they start together in your ocean wave, the end and adjacent center, and we know they end together. As callers, we know they end on the other side of the square. I don't know that that really helps dancers, but the only person that you touch is you march on and off that big wave of six down the middle is you and your buddy. Yeah. So as we kind of go down, they turn half, they go three quarters and the others start walking. And here we see this guy in red at the bottom or girl in red and the adjacent hooking onto the big wave and going six, four, they hook on again, six, and then four go three quarters while the others move up. Now I noticed some taminations overlap, but the dancers won't be doing that. That person who was in the way, I'll give you an example of one of them. Uh, when we have that wave of six, like right here, that should be a wave of all red dancers. This blue dancer is gonna be going wider for what they need to do, or they're gonna somehow have moved between them without walking through them. So Relay the Ducey works. And again, the dancers will have fun. They'll enjoy it. It'll feel different. They'll have a sense of accomplishment. They're gonna to wanna to do all the parts. You're gonna be bored with it before they are. Clark, can you do the tamination speed on walking through that? So- For Relay the Ducey? Yeah, without the hesitations, just to Here see you go. The, the fun kaleidoscope of it. Six, four, six, finish. Yeah, and so the big the big thing is if you're doing the get off the end and circulate, you loop wide, and that works really well. Great. <laughs> okay, so here there's a whole section on ocean wave, the longer calls. We can do load the boat. It works fine on the ends, and but it ends in columns, and I'm going to have some stuff to say about columns. You also have split circulate, scoot back, walk and dodge, but after walk and dodge, you have lines back to back, so you got to do either half tag or 
somebody run or figure out how you want to get out of partner trade. That doesn't work well. Let's talk about that. Um, we're going to hit that partner trade in just a second. So my, my talk says, learn on your own with your own dancers. At this point, I've shown you more than enough for you to get two squares together. And you can learn while they're learning. You can either be a dancer in the square or the caller outside the square, up to you. And you have more than enough material for you know 45 minutes of dancing and moving around. Now, let's say I did walk and dodge and I have lines back to back. Uh, where is wheel around going to be? Base one. Do we see it and I'm blind? No, maybe basic two. Really? There we go. Yep. Is two. Okay. I want, <laughs> hopefully, oh, boo. We will. Boo. Just try and wheel around from lines, maybe. Boo. Or the lines facing in, but it's the same thing. Yep. No. So we'll do it from lines facing in, but imagine everyone's facing out. It's still the same movement. See how good it works? <laughs> it's, that, it's that same bend the line thing. So bend the line from two face lines and wheel around and reverse wheel around from lines back to back. Those are your friends. So if you do a walk and dodge, Yep. Okay. Um, let's go back to the talk. Hashtag grand swing through, of course, looks cool and no one intersects and, you know, you can do a spin the top from ocean waves and get them to a tidal wave and whatever. The column formation. The column formation is generally a disaster. So you can, you can head into it knowing it's going to be a disaster and you have some alternatives of what you want to do. Taminations will do one thing. Let's start with columns. Let's say you had lines facing and did a touch a quarter and you wanted to do column circulate. So we want to do um, column circulate. That's got to be mainstream or am I wrong? No, one. Really? Basic. Oh, we do everything from one and it's going to be here, right? because we just kill them with circulate. Good, here we go. So that doesn't look very good, does it? I'll show you the column circulate. So the question is, whenever dancers are dancing on a grid, how far apart are they? And we notice we dance the ocean waves further apart so we could spread the columns out away from each other a half step, and we would suddenly be in those nice stars that we had, except we couldn't hold hands because the dancers who are in the star working with each other are in tandem, one behind the other. And were they to dance these columns spread out wide, then the columns circulate would work fine. But are, are, we're used to dancing columns close together so we can hang on to our adjacent dancer. And that just doesn't work very well in hashtag for the center dancers. And that's why I say columns are a problem. A if, very, go ahead. just an observation that I had uh, thinking about real dancers versus contaminations on things that you had traffic patterns the start and the end was okay, but it was during the process that people yes. were standing on heads. Whereas on that column circulate, the problem is at the beginning and end, but the traffic pattern looked really nice. Correct. No, you're, that's a good observation. Now, here's a different type of column. It's an eight chain through formation. Again, if we have the dancers take half a step away from the adjacent dancer, then we, we have our friends facing us. And if we were to do an eight chain through, which is actually gonna be a great dancing move and is worth showing dancers, these stars 
we do hands across pull buys. So each dancer holds right hands with the dancer they want to pull by with. And as they pull by, it ends up making a star that automatically turns. On the ends, the courtesy turn has to be wide and exaggerated. And the left pull by in the middle, no one's in the way and it's just a normal left pull by. So you have to get the timing okay, but eight chain through is a beautiful move. It won't look quite as good here. Oops, oh, that would be eight chain one. Let's try this one. <clears throat> okay, I'll look. Eight chain through. So, um, so Clark, if, if you, sorry to interrupt, but if, oh. as with the, um, the parallel boxes or the eight chain formation and with the columns, when you initially set that up, I'm assuming most of your dancers are plus, but even, even easy dancers can understand that, that take a step. If you have everybody half spread yep, right there, that will set those stars. And as long as you inform them, you know, after the courtesy turn on the end, just do that half spread to maintain that distance. Yes. So that would actually flow really nice. Is yes. That no, it's a great call. One And Hey, dancers love mastering this stuff. Like something that's yeah. a little awkward the first or second time and it gets better. That's that sense of accomplishment. And, and what hashtag gives you is a hundred little experiences of senses of accomplishment of things you didn't know you could do that maybe went a little clunky the first or second time and then you've got it and wow, this is really cool. We, we're doing something. Um, That's I don't know. And maybe, man, maybe you're coming to this. The reason I was asking that is I, I can see where you're setting this up. I can see where you're setting up the two face lines. If you're doing something like a Ferris wheel, as an example, you have to maintain that half spread kind of distance to actually make those work. Is that correct? Yeah. And if okay. you if you keep doing the half spread and you're always on what you might want to call ocean wave or half ta hashtag spots, then, then more power to you. And you can do the eight chain call, the circulate calls, the column circulates, et cetera. Okay. Um, you know, you're talking about the feelings of accomplishment. Picture the first time you called Grand Square to a, a party night or, or a class where you had the heads doing it and then the sides doing it. And then you tell everybody they're gonna all do it the same at the same time and not crash into each other. Um, that little, wow, we, we interacted with everybody. I imagine mm -hmm. that, the, that the hashtags provides that same wow experience over and over again um to the more experienced caller or dancer it's kind of cool um i'm i'm almost done um i want to just give you a couple more things um here's diamonds you know how diamonds are hard for dancers because half yeah. the dancers don't have someone to hang on to yeah wow. this is even harder to see but if they can see their friends and see their diamond, the call itself dances just fine. I, I can see that you're either, why you do it all boys, all girls, but I could also see if, if I was going to do this and they're not comfortable doing that, I would have eight red pennies and eight blue pennies. Yes. So they can see. Them. Um, those of you who go to hourglasses, we know hourglasses are almost impossible to see for dancers. You can see the picture up over on the right of hourglass circulate. Only two dancers hold on to each other and have an anchor position, and the rest all have to find their position, you know, various spacing around the outside. So here it's almost impossible. I mean, you're just a blur of people standing in space, but the call works great. <laughs> um, and if you'll, um, here, I'm going to identify four dancers. This is, see, look over on the picture on the right. You see dancer one, 
is going to go to five, is going to go to six, is going to go to two, is going to go to one in a in your block circulate. Yeah. And the blocks you're on a on a grid and only half the spaces are filled in. But when you do hashtag, all the spaces are filled in and no one's on top of each other. And yeah. doing block calls, like, oh my gosh, they work. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of stuff you can do with hashtag. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I mentioned diamonds, I try blocks. Okay, so here's the end of the talk. Um, I got you started and I never resolve the square. And I actually never end the square. I don't have a, Alaman left, right and left, grand promenade home, you're home, give yourselves a big hand. The problem is two hashtags, two squares on top of each other after any sort of squared set or thar figure or Alamo, all dancers are standing on top of each other. I've never come up with a good way to end this other than to say, hey, I've danced you, we've taken like 40 minutes, you guys must be tired, give yourselves a big hand, this was great, and then we're done. <laughs> which is a horrible ending, but that's the best I've got. Singing um, calls, singing calls. <laughs> yeah, and I don't do singing calls, so I don't have that issue either. Um, <laughs> but um, anyhow, that's ending the tip. And we've talked about why this is fun. So that runs us back to here. And all I have is some discussion ideas, um, but I'm done. So let me stop sharing my screen. Yeah, the interesting. So let me say, since I'm since we're at the top of the hour and a couple minutes past, the usual, if you have to leave, don't feel you're offending anybody. If you want to stay around, I'm sure there's going to be lots of interesting talking. I definitely want to thank Clark for for presenting this. Um, I guess I didn't. Ex yes, thank you. <laughs> I didn't expect to enjoy it. <laughs> Sorry, Clark, but I did. It was really cool. Um, and I really want to thank Brad for for implementing this so Clark could show it off. And, and I love the the kaleidoscope stuff of it. Um, I'll get back to you in a second, Brad, just because because I really want to <laughs> thank you about other stuff. Um, Dan, again, for the videoing and putting this up eventually and, and setting it up for us. Um, all of you guys for coming and participating. Um, we The presentation part went longer than usual, but it included discussion in the process. It was overlaid with the overlaid with the discussion. It was sort of a hashtag of, of presentation and discussion, which was great. So um, it was very appropriate timing. Um, Let's let's give another big hand for Clark because I think that was really good. Um, and uh, Brad, I just want to thank you in general for. I've been using Taminations an awful lot, mostly the sequencer um, in teaching mental image, um, and without it, it wouldn't be possible with Zoom. Um, and, and usually, just do it with my magnetic dolls, and my second camera doesn't work very well. Um, I am in the process of writing you an email. Maybe we should talk instead. I have an, a couple of bugs that have shown up in your rewrite. I have a couple of, is it a bug or a feature quirks that I'd like to talk about? And then I have a wish list of things I'd like to. Um, but again, okay, thank, great. Yep. It, it's been it's made all this remote stuff possible and, and particularly here to, to throw this together for Clark this quickly. Let's all give a hand for, for Brad and not all he's done for us. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to say thanks for fixing that bend the line issue last night, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I haven't done anything. I think maybe there was just some, some, you know, maybe your browser was a little out of sync or something. So with that, um, Clark, I was just curious about when you were talking about, let's see, we did waves, we did a walk and dodge, um, and we ended up with lines facing out and what can you do smoothly? Um, uh, Hannah
Dennis half tag worked nicely. I was wondering something that that um, Barry Clasper used at one point was a Bose Bose trade. Would that traffic pattern be okay? Yeah, I think that would work fine. You, I mean, it's obvious what his bells and bells is, is A2, but, or A1 yeah. or A2. But that seems like that would be a nice way to get into waves. Yeah. And someone asked about wheel and deal. And, you know, wheel and deal from lines back to back, um, that would work, especially the dancers can take a little step forward. They're all disengaged from each other. They can do the wheel and deal. But then we're in the columns and we have to remember to spread out a little bit and reintegrate with our little, you know, four person stars or diamonds in each quadrant. And that that's fiddly. Also, Clark, as a caller, you have to remember to use sex independent calls. Yep. You have to. I'm just trying to review what you said here. You have to remember what calls don't overlap and, and crunch people together. You know, we don't want 3D dancing. That's another story. Um, and do you try to resolve? No. So as a new caller who sucks at resolving, hey, don't resolve this stuff. <laughs> it strikes me you might be able to do some with, with that. I was going to say with mental image, you could get some, some of that stuff restrictions and follow some of it. The problem is resolving, you'd end up with a, a right and left grand, which you said, don't do any circle stuff. <laughs> yeah, circles, thars, and squares don't work. But but all men left in promenade would, wouldn't it? Promenade doesn't work. It's the same as a thar. Oh, OK. Everyone's on top of each other. Um, can I say something? Go um, along. I, I, I did uh, hashtag sometimes, and I will find another way to set up the hashtag so um after that i can resolve and if you're interested uh, Go for I it. Can, uh, but i need i need to share this, this screen and i need three or five minutes <laughs> is it Fine possible yeah, dan can can let us do share um, i believe you can share right now okay i try Hey, well, guys. I was setting it up. I wanted to know a show of hands. How many people have called hashtags already? Clark. Who? <laughs> wow, nobody. How this many of great. you? How many of you have danced it? I've only seen it. I've never seen anything. <laughs> so, can you see my desktop? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, let's look only on the on the left side at um, first. I uh, asked the dancers to make normal squares, um, one square uh, behind another. So we can see on the left top, there's my mouse, this is a number one square. And the mirror square, I, I call it mirror, uh, is behind it with the same colors. And this is um, the, the, um, the material to get into um, into the hashtag formation. So uh, heads promenade halfway, lead right, we are left, bend the line, pass the ocean right and left through. And I asked the girls only to roll or face left. And this gives me this formation. And now I ask the dancers to slide together. So that you have a boys uh, wave and the girls wave and that's my hashtag and when that I, I, I call it in this example a swing through and circulates that we talked about and then I break and the resolving is um, to push back and so we have the old squares here is a number one square, and here is a number is a mirror square, and that works for resolving. And another way, um, now go to the right side is the same thing as left on the top two squares. I ask them to head promenade, lead right via left, girl hinge. So we have diamonds, and when we have diamond, I ask the two squares 
slide together so we have the same thing the boys wave and the girls wave mm -hmm. now we did some scoot backs and spin the tops or something single file circulate from columns and after that the same thing I resolved bring bring the number one square to the bottom the mirror square on the top push back swing partner promenade home that's, that's very clever my like kind uh, klaus yes. uh, in in working with that uh, once once you've identified you've got one square and the second square the difference is they're they're not being kept separate you're you change it to that's when you change non-gendered calls so all the boys are working with all the boys all the girls are working with the girls throughout your sequences is that correct until you until um, you're ready to bring them back it's, it's the same rules that the clerk said only the boys have one way the scoot backs and the, the, the hashtag rules yeah that's the normal hashtag rule i uh, the reason i was asking i was just looking at it is if you're you're working boys with boys um if it's set up one square working with another square, let's say we're not working boys with boys, boy, girl, boy, girl, standard square formations, but they're all wearing pinnies, identifying their own square, it's just changing who they're working with. The hashtag rules do apply. It's just a matter of that that puts an extra onus on the dancers. Do they have any trouble adapting to that? Have you found? Um, first of all, um, my English is not so very good, so I can do not Sorry. <laughs> everything you say. <laughs> um, what what, what um, I'm asking is your your initial setup has two separate squares. When you normal yeah, squares, when, boys and girls. When you, yes. When you put them together, your ocean waves that you're working with is all boys, all girls. Tell the dancers that they're working now, all boys, all girls. Is that correct? Yes, it okay. is. And then we started. And then you bring them back to normal squares and separate them. Yes, we started in normal squares, and uh, the the on the right side the diamond version makes normally a boys wave and girls wave. And at that moment, uh, I tell the dancers, now the boys are one formation, girls are one, another formation. Okay. So I see it now. You've used, you've, you've, uh, can... you're, you're like in the block. You're in, in uh, the C1 blocks that Clark did. Yeah. Right. And what's clever is oh, one can. half step forward from there, and suddenly, poof, he's in hashtags. And one half step back, and poof, he's back to where he, he's into the other things now. I, I like what you do. And if and if we and if you start with normal squares, so we can end up with normal. Um, squares so we can resolve yes but it's not easy not easy to to, to see that I, so i um, have a complete preparation for that uh, side calling is uh, real hard stuff Klaus, is it possible to get your notes somehow about the in how you get into the hashtag formation Uh, one more, please. Uh, is it possible to to get uh, to see that one more time? We didn't make notes. We were so interested in what you did that we forgot to make notes. How to get into the hashtag? If you do not have this <laughs> on a website right now, I would love to get a copy of that PDF yeah, and put it up yeah. on a website as accompanying material to this talk. Yeah. Good. Good. Send your paperwork, Klaus. Okay, I, I send it to Dan. Okay. I... Dan, are you going to keep it or are you going to share it with the rest of us? Um, I will put it on alamandleft.com and I will put a link to that material in the comments to this video when I post this video. Great, thank you. 
yes no the the point is to give it make it available because i think it's really cool yeah it is <laughs> much the same way that yeah clark stuff is cool too I, this is all really cool <laughs> so now with us doing all this virtual dancing because we can't get enough people together if you just have one square you could have your second overlapping square be virtual and it'd be no problem at all <laughs> also it would be no fun at all except for the fact that square dancing is fun <laughs> your your cheeks must be hurting don the amount of times you put your tongue in cheek <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Hey, can I say something that's unrelated? Yeah. Did you guys know that you can take, when you're in the gallery view or any view, you can pick these pictures and drag and drop them anywhere you want? Did you guys realize that? Yep. I didn't realize that until just the other day, but you can just take anybody's picture and put it at the top, or you can put it anywhere you want, and rearrange all these pictures. Wow, you know, yeah, we, you're right. So I didn't know how many people knew that, but I thought that was cool. Even when it's in the side column, you can raise and raise and lower the people and reorient them any way you want. Wow. That was a neat feature. So if you and have now to... I'll discover if uh, when you're recording to the cloud, whether the recording goes into gallery view when I go into gallery view, because I usually try not to mess with that stuff lest I screw things up. Oh, By well, the way... you don't have to go, but you can do it even in the side. So it just I thought that was interesting. I've just got this visual of Dan, you and Mark sitting together talking about the tech side of this and, uh, you know, 15 hours later in the discussion, you're still on the first topic. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, sometime um, I want to, I want to learn enough about something called Open Broadcast Studio to be able to do more with it. But anyway, we're John getting away afield. Let's go back to I hashtags first. John, John had his hand up. Just saying, I, I've got to go, and I enjoyed the session, Clark. Thank you, and Don. Thank you for doing it. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Hannah and Lars. Good to time. see you too. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> Take care. care. Say hi to Deborah. Well done. I was just going to mention John in a comment, um, but you can go if you don't want to hear what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when Clark and I were talking about this, and I've been announcing it, and Clark talked about it at the beginning, he's talking that hashtags is something similar to hexagons or kaleidoscopes or other things. And John made me aware um, when we spoke recently that Clark had come up with something called barstool dancing um, that John has really enjoyed doing. And I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, John's had a lot of fun with that in Europe, I think. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm surprised, Clark, you didn't mention that as one of them. Anyway, John, that, thank you for that bit of knowledge, and you're you're dismissed if you have to be. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, I've done some. I've I've had some real fun with the bar stool dancing. I've had some good sessions with that. Yep. I've I've had some good fun on bar stools, but I don't know about the dancing part. <laughs> That that would be more. That's that's too much of to, to had to do that on television. We'll have to do that with the actual dancers. Let's see, just too smooth. Too far. Who are you going to mute, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I got him. The problem. The game. problem is though, when you advertise the barstool dancing session, they come and they expect margaritas. Well, I like to help. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing, Goog? You keep yeah. unmuting yourself. We he's, he's and it's in the really of the loud behind you. All right. So one yeah. of the discussion. I, I think yeah, I think Goog is trying I'm to say something. A, I'm sitting in a bar. Oh, he's sitting <laughs> in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so one of the the questions or discussion things I had was, um, are we creating a monster and does this hurt square dancing more than it helps it? Um, if we look back on Hexagon, Hexagon was done a little bit and then forgotten, and then it was written up somewhere and mostly forgotten. And then it was used by um, 
Bill Eiler. Uh, I'm spacing on his name. Bill Eiler. Bill Eiler, thank you. Um, and he would show it around, and but only he was doing it. And then I came up with a slightly different observation on it and realized we could do it with all calls. And that spread, I noticed that my um, Hexagon webpage has over 35,000 views and there's whole clubs that all they do is dance hexagons. Um, so hexagons in some ways have taken over. And if I go to a mainstream or plus, you know, evening of dancing in at say the national square dance convention, and I'm kind of bored, I always just go to the back of the hall and get a hexagon. Um, so it's almost like it's ruined normal square dancing for me and I want to be doing hexagon or something to add to add enough zest to it. Um, I don't think that hashtag is going to do the same thing because you can't get in the back of the hall and dance hashtags. But I would expect that people and maybe you guys your callers are going to be anxious. Hey, let me try this with you. This could be fun. So I think we always have to be a little careful to see if we've unleashed some sort of monster that's doing more harm than good. Mark, I, was asked a, I was asked a similar question on that when I was doing the rectangles because we always had a couple of couples out and I still look at it as it is pretty much still a gimmick. Even the hexagons, although they're in entire clubs, there's entire clubs that dance hexes or rectangles for that matter, If even if they don't have uh, they'll do it at the regular square dance. I don't think it's ruining it. I think part and parcel of that argument that's being left out of the equation is one of the reasons why people are looking to do that at the back of the hall and do something different is our calling has degenerated to the point where for a lot of dancers, it's no longer interesting. This is all part of that rush up the levels. It's all part of this kinds of thing. And we need, we as callers need to go back to make the calling more interesting, more danceable rather than a geometric puzzle, but a variation with geometric interest that is succeedable, that, that holds that interest. And then these things can go back in, in my opinion, please do not take this wrong. In my opinion, hexagons, the, the hashtags, whatnot are the, occasional fun gimmick that is a wow it's kind of like progressive squares is an occasional fun gimmick but if a caller does that every single dance he goes to you know that's what they're going to do it ceases to be the adventure that it's meant to be that's just my opinion i'll throw it out there for discussion well i'm gonna i guess i better proceed this with here's another tongue in cheek and my cheeks are fine but my tongue's getting tired uh but since we all know square dancing is sort of fading away and going away, all these things mean we're going to go out with a bang. We're, we're, <laughs> those of us that are left are going to really push it to its limits and enjoy it. Again, tongue in cheek. We're not going mm. away. We're, we're coming back and reviving soon. Any other? Uh, one, one thing. Um, uh, one I, I'm calling um, also um, hexagon since uh, near 15, 60 years. Uh, I have a um, group, hexagon group, uh, plus and advanced dancing. And I was asked, uh, is it possible, that's a question to Clark, <laughs> is it possible uh, to have a progressive hexagon? Um, I think it might be possible with uh, a minimum of three hexagons, isn't it? I haven't thought about that. Um, we know that squares can be um, replicated in two dimensions and, and fill space. And we know that hexagons can be replicated in two dimensions and fill space. Um, so, and progressive squares, typically when you're facing out and the caller asks you to move on to the next square, you could certainly have hexagons that when dancers are facing out, they can move on, i.e. pass through with the dancers in the next square, while those who are on the periphery do a California twirl. So yes, I would expect you could do 
progressive hexagons. That was not the question I thought you were going to ask. <laughs> the question he I, thought I he was going to ask her, can you take two hexagons and overlap them and make hashtags out of them? And the answer is yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guessed right. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the question. Can you combine hashtags and hexagons and, and have two of them overlapped? And I think the answer is yes. Um, I don't remember whether we've ever done it. We know that it's hard enough to see the ocean waves and the boxes in in hexagons that to hashtag that and have all those stars everywhere, I think would be pretty hard. Yes, I, tr I tried it one time. Um, I will do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> That would be twenty. That'd be twenty-four people in a whack. That'd be a lot of people to shovel around. Yeah. Now, here's something else to say: is that hex? If we, another topic we've never talked about is performance dancing. You often at big conventions, sometimes there are performance square dance groups who come in and perform a set routine that looks very beautiful, often with with more than one square of dancers, often with squares that combine, maybe there's a color scheme, et cetera, et cetera. And um, in Delaware, there's a caller named Clay Goss and his group is called the Clay Figures and they do exhibition dancing. And one thing that looks good in exhibition is hexagons. One thing that doesn't look good in exhibition is hashtags. <laughs> hashtags is just a giant clump of dancers that you can't figure out what they're doing, although it, it's fun for the dancers. Hexagons are spaced out a bit more and, and octagons and so forth. And, and there you have very much um, kaleidoscopic views from the stands and the dance, and it looks good in performance. Interesting. Clark, one of the things that I was thinking of, and then you eventually got to, um, is dancing in blocks. And that, that looked cool, especially with Tam Nations, where everything was spread out. And I assume it would be the same with dancers. Um, have you ever tried, when you're in blocks, I, I'm just trying to think of doing hashtags where at some point or other you change the square you're in from one to another. Hashtags in blocks might be a, a way to do it. Everybody working together pass through and now in your, your different block or just pushing the limits here a bit. But I don't know if, if it's if I'm making sense, but have them dance for a while and, you know, half the people in the other overlapped square and then do the same kind of thing to bring them back again. I don't know. Just nope. thinking. <laughs> no, don't think about it. Okay, so much for yep. bringing up conversation with that one. <laughs> Did Alex have a question or a comment? Or Alan, excuse me? Yeah, yeah. I have a, <clears throat> so at, during your presentation, what I was thinking about was, uh, you know, at plus and advanced, when we got into all eight calls and bars where you basically have two waves overlapping each other, in some sense, that's sort of half of a hashtag. I yeah. mean, it's sort of a pared down it's a version. Four dance of that. Or hashtag, yeah. But that experience of sort of dancing with overlapping figures, we've already had at lower levels. So I'm I'm wondering sort of whether that's transfer a transferable visualization or skill to the hashtags. Yeah, I don't know, but I like, but I think that's a good observation that um, all four couples and all eight is is essentially kind of two couple hashtag. Right. And obviously on those calls, especially when we first teach them all four couples square through, there's all sorts of traffic pattern. You know, you pass this one by the right, you right pull by that, you pass the next one by the left, you left pull by, you know. So we've had to invent call by call traffic pattern rules for the all four couples. Yeah, that's what I was thinking was. Yeah. Uh... yeah, they seem to invent the traffic patterns pretty quickly while without having to have them be taught while you're um, while you're walking and doing hashtags. It, it actually that's almost I'm just wondering a way to train them for it is do two couple hashtags with a full square um, and just sort of get them thinking that way. 
two couple dancing but hashtag wise so the two couples are overlapping um, it might be a, a training thing to get them thinking. Well, the problem is we know that columns don't work well, and that's basically what facing couples are. So ocean waves work well in hashtag. Your two-couple ocean waves is a single ocean wave, and your hashtag looks like a thar. So the calls you're going to be doing are swing through, spin the top, somebody run, couples hinge, um half tag well nope then you're in a box you know so how many ocean wave to ocean wave and ocean wave to two-face line and two-face line to ocean wave calls do you really have and you kind of run out of it pretty quickly except i'm just thinking because with virtual dancing so many people are doing two couple stuff yeah right we don't have that much right and we have been doing a lot of two couple dancing um is there has there been any attempt at doing when you're doing hashtags to do the the if you're passing somebody in the same spot or meeting somebody in the same spot joining right shoulders or joining right hands or or passing right shoulders kind of thing if you tried rather than establishing their own traffic pattern with the main thing being don't crash um or don't well step the right head. shoulder rule only works for two dancers who are who are you know one facing north and one facing south and you got what, right, how, right do you, angles. how do you control two dancers passing you know where one's going north and one's going east we don't really talk about that is it you know you go first i go first there's no real shoulder ish thing there so that's kind of an issue if you do an all boy all girl square maybe ladies first yeah <laughs> interesting oh you old gentleman you <laughs> do you <laughs> old yes gentle i don't know um clark is there any hashtag dancing on youtube we can go no look? idea i haven't looked I, i'm sure mel will find some if it is he's our research person <laughs> well, I, just I, wanted to make sure that hannah and lars and anybody else who saw it i post posted the uh the link to Klaus's uh, hashtag notes in the chat here. Thank you. And obviously I'll put it on the notes when we, yeah. when I post the video. So when asked, almost nobody raised their hand and said they've done it. How many people think they're going to try it once they get two squares together? Do you think this is within your ability as a caller to just work with two squares and do some of this? Yeah. One, yeah, yeah. Okay. Out of curiosity, how many have done hash? How many have called hashtags? There's I'm not talking. I, I mean, I mean hexagons. Yeah, hexagons. A couple of weeks, hexagons. A bunch more, and how many have danced hexagons? How about square? No. <laughs> <laughs> I danced bygones once. My brain hasn't yeah. quite untwisted yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bygones are tough. Those I don't know, and I, I'm guessing I don't want to from what you said. <laughs> I think you there, should let bygones be bygones. It was fun, though. <laughs> They're a really interesting take on uh, two couple that I have looked at, but I've never had a chance to dance. Two couples dancing for a couple of choreography. It's fun. interesting well so, have we met that hit that lull i think we have so. been. um all right uh, repeating thanks dan for recording hosting thank you clark for keeping us getting us interested there seemed to be a lot of interest um we've had our i i, I get a kick out of it. every week we seem to have Lately, about 22 people, we reached a high of 23 this time. Um, but it's not always the same people. We have different people come in for different interests, and I think that's great, too. Um, pass the word, and no telling how many people look at the videos after. Well, I guess there is. YouTube tells you that. But um, it's been fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Clark. And Thank you. Uh, we will see you.
And some people have been giving me some pretty good ideas for future things, so um, I'm working on those. Clark, did you have a, a, a final comment? You were raising your hand, or were you just I saying I was goodbye? waving goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I'm, I'm exiting, and uh, hopefully you guys won't be going for seven hours more afterwards, but <laughs> thanks again, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.